Hi guys, today we're gonna to be testing out four DIY grout cleaners that I always see people talking about on the internet and I wanted to see for myself if they're any good. And spoiler alert, I am not a fan of two of these things. I am surprised to say that I didn't like two of the most popular things that people are always telling me to try. But we'll get into that as I show you the different recipes. Let's get started. I started out by comparing my favorite Dawn dish soap mixed with a little bit of hot water and comparing that to a 50-50 mix of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. So I always hear from people that that baking soda hydrogen peroxide mix is a great DIY grout cleaner. So I really wanted to see how it held up against just my basic Dawn dish, so dish soap that I like to use to clean grout. If you've watched any of my other cleaning videos, you'll see that I use Dawn a lot because it's a great degreaser and it really does break down a lot of dirt and help flush it away pretty easily without leaving a lot of residue behind as long as you don't use too much soap. But even with that Dawn, eventually stains will set into your grout, like coffee, tea, all the spills and things that happen in a kitchen especially are going to set into your grout and eventually you'll have to get rid of it. In the past, I've been using Grout Renew, which is a grout paint and sealer mixed to get my grout back to its normal color. So I use that once every year or two. But on my Grout Renew videos, people always talk about how baking soda is a miracle or vinegar is a miracle and hydrogen peroxide is a miracle. So I decided to take some of the popular recipes and test them out. So let's do a side by side of that Dawn dish soap, dish soap and hot water compared to the 50-50 mix of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. I started by applying that baking soda hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide mix to the grout line because you want to let that sit on the grout for about five minutes before you start scrubbing. So while that was sitting on the grout, I moved on to using the Dawn dish soap on the other side of that blue tape. As you can see, I'm also using a drill brush with these DIY grout cleaners. This is another thing that people always recommend that I use in the comments, so I decided to give it a try for this video. So all I'm doing is dipping that brush into that soapy water. So you don't want to get your drill wet, but you can get the brush wet. I'm dipping it into the water and just scrubbing every grout line on that side of the tape. And it's actually pretty easy to do with that drill brush, but I have to say that pulling the trigger on your drill the whole time that you're scrubbing your floor does make your hand and your finger hurt a little after a while. So if you wanna just use a normal scrubber, go for it. So after scrubbing that whole section of tile with that soapy water, I moved on to wiping it away with a clean, wet towel. And I made sure to run that cloth through all of the grout lines to make sure I get away any soapy residue. If you leave any soap behind on your grout, it's going to just hold on to the dirt that falls onto it later. So you want to make sure you get it all cleaned off with a wet towel. I'll give you a closer look at how that grout turned out in a second. But first, let's move on to using that drill brush on the grout lines that have the baking soda and hydrogen peroxide mix. I went back to dipping that drill brush into that mixture so that I made sure that I had enough liquid to remove all of the dirt from the grout. So I just keep dipping it every time I think I've reached sort of a dry area on the grout. I wanna have enough liquid so that it's lifting that dirt and any of the grease and anything that's in those grout lines, lifting it up and making it possible for me to wipe it away after I'm done. So after scrubbing all of the grout lines on that side, I used a clean wet rag again to clean up all of that dirty water and clean away all of the grout lines so that I could see how they looked. I will say that it is a lot harder to clean the grout lines after using this mixture because the baking soda leaves a powdery residue in the grout lines and on the tile everywhere. So I really wasn't expecting that. I thought it was gonna wipe away easier. So I did have to keep wiping the grout lines and the tile clean to get the baking soda off. But let me give you a closer look at how these two sides compare after wiping away all of the residue and seeing the finished grout lines. So here's the baking soda and hydrogen peroxide side. And as you can see, it is actually looking pretty good. It does seem like that side is a little bit lighter than the just the Dawn dish, dish soap mixture that I used on the other side. So as you can see, the grout lines on just the dish soap side look a bit darker than the ones on the hydrogen peroxide and baking soda side. Now let's peel away that tape so you can see what that grout looked like before I cleaned either side. So as you can see there, it was actually pretty dirty grout. So both sides did a good job cleaning the grout. It's just the baking soda side seemed a little bit better. But guys, that is not the end of the story. So I started cleaning the rest of my floor with that recipe, that 50-50 mix of baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. And I got halfway through my kitchen and I realized this baking soda is not coming off my floor. 
So I had been wiping it away with clean rags. I'd been rinsing the rags out, cleaning more. I used my steam mop to clean the floor. Nothing was getting that baking soda to come completely off easily. So I decided this recipe was a no-go. And I actually figured out that the grout had still a baking soda residue on it, which was actually what was making it look lighter, that white baking soda. So I decided it was time to test out two different, two more recipes to see if those were actually the answer to getting better looking grout than I was getting with just that Dawn dish soap. So let's go on to the next two recipes. The third DIY grout cleaner I decided to try was just using hydrogen peroxide on the grout. So it has great cleaning qualities all on its own. The baking soda in that original recipe just adds grit that helps scrub away stains. But I'm already using a drill brush, so I don't really need that baking soda for extra grit. So let's see how the hydrogen peroxide works all by itself. And again, I let it sit for five minutes before I started to scrub it away. After scrubbing all of those grout lines, I again used a clean wet rag to wipe all of the residue out of those grout lines to, before I took a look at how it turned out. And I have to say guys, that hydrogen peroxide all by itself, as you can see here, did a great job. That grout is a lot whiter in the areas that I used it on than it is on the grout lines next to it. So by itself, hydrogen peroxide is pretty good and you can get a huge container of it for like a dollar. But there was still one more DIY grout cleaner that I wanted to try. I wanted to see how that hydrogen peroxide mixed with just a little bit of Dawn dish soap would work. So the idea of putting the Dawn dish soap into that hydrogen peroxide is just that the Dawn dish soap is a good degreaser. So if you have any greasy spills or oil residue on your grout, the Dawn might give that cleaner a little bit of extra click, kick and lift in the grout. So I mixed some up and tried that next. Once again, I let that sit on the grout lines for five minutes before I started using the drill brush to scrub those grout lines. So, and then I moved on to wiping all of that residue away with a clean, wet rag again. And here is a close up look at how that cleaner worked on the grout lines in that section of the tile. So as you can see, the Dawn dish soap mixed with the hydrogen peroxide still did a good job of cleaning the grout lines. I'm not sure if it did any of a better job than the hydrogen peroxide alone. But overall, the three grout cleaners that didn't have the baking soda, I thought were way better than the one with the baking soda, just because the baking soda was such a pain to remove from the floor. But now let's move on to the one big shocking problem that I found in this video that I haven't even actually mentioned. Here's a close look at my grout lines after I cleaned my floor with that drill brush. Now I have to say this has never happened to me before, but what you're looking at there, that uneven coloring is that grout paint that I used a couple years ago being scrubbed away by that drill brush. So if you use a grout paint or even just a grout sealer, a normal grout sealer on your grout, that drill brush is so strong, it's going to start breaking down and removing that grout sealer or that grout paint. So I recommend to not ever use a drill brush on your grout lines. Unless you're planning on using grout sealer right after using that drill brush. You want grout sealer on your grout because it helps put a barrier against future stains. So just remember that. And just to show you the difference, here's a look at a section of my tile that I didn't clean with that drill brush. So you can see how pretty and even the grout coloring is in that section of tile. So stick with the homemade cleaners that don't have the baking soda. Avoid using the drill brush so that your grout sealer stays intact. And if you want to see how I use that grout paint on my tile to make the grout look pretty, then check out my previous videos. I'll put a link above. And if you like this video, if it's helped you at all, please like this video. That'd be great. Thanks, guys.